All right, next thing I want to talk a little bit about is taxes, and we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time on real estate taxes here in Indiana, uh, but I want to cover just a quick section because a lot of people don't really know, or if you're new to the business, like those of you that have less than two years, which would be you guys, since you are listening to the 30-hour post-licensing, is that Indiana actually runs one year in arrears. And what I mean by that is this. Here is the last couple years, as you can see. Now, our tax bill or our tax bill, uh, payments are due in May the 5th or May the 10th, rather. i sorry, misspoke. And November the 10th. So they're due twice a year. So first of all, that's why you see the semi-annual taxes listed in the BLC, or if you're a different county, the MLS system, all right? <clears throat> so when you go to pay your taxes here on May the 10th, we are actually paying a year in arrears, which means you're paying this tax bill which was from November the 8th of 2018 until May of 2019. So when you pay your bill in May of 2020, you are actually paying taxes that were almost a year and a half behind where you're at now. We pay last year's tax bill, but it was all of this time frame, okay? So most of the common occurrences when we negotiate the taxes in the deal, we will say that the prorate to the day of closing. So you as a selling agent working with the buyer should understand they are going to get a credit because the seller, if we closed on May the 10th and let's say he has not paid his taxes for May the 10th, he is going to owe this much because that would come due on May the 10th, but he's also going to bring them current here. So in theory, he is paying almost one and a half years of taxes. Everybody see what I'm saying? If you don't, send me an email. Now let's say he put, you closed on May the 11th, the day after he paid the taxes. He's still going to be paying this to bring it current because we haven't paid this tax bill yet. This tax bill is not due until way over here. So at best, the seller's going to probably pay one year at taxes, you know? <clears throat> He's very seldom going to pay less than one year of taxes. So on the buyer side, understand that this is all going to be credited to the buyer. So as the buyer, when you're figuring up your cash for your buyer to bring, remember he is going to get a credit to the buyer because we use an accrued bill, meaning we pay at the end of when we use it, not only do we pay at the end, we pay a whole year at the end. So the seller is going to have to pay that. The seller is going to get debited when you do your net to seller. If you use a worksheet with a net to seller, do not forget all of this. Potentially, it could be up to one and a half years almost for the seller to pay. So think about that when you're negotiating your deal. We actually always, almost always put, hey, we're going to prorate to the day of closing. You could actually say something like this. I want the seller to pay the next installment. So they're paying up here and paying almost two years of taxes. So that's potential. I don't see that used a lot. That was used a lot in 2010, 2011, when they did a bunch of reassessment, and there was also a bunch of other issues. Now, the other thing you need to remember with the taxes, that remember, it's based on this thing called the assessed value. 
Well, Indiana is supposed to go to market value. So if you have an old home, let's say like my parents who have lived in their home since 1973, if the house is assessed at something really low based upon that time frame, and you go to buy it today, the taxes you see are going to be based on that assess amount. But when your buyer goes ahead and buys the property, remember, this is going to be his assessed amount. So his taxes are going to go up. You might want to understand that. Now, the lender should get that when they do the loan estimate form for your buyer because they are going to base the current taxes on what's going to be the market value or the purchase price and that's roughly going to be the assessed value so keep that in mind when you're doing that on the buyer side now what are delinquent taxes when a tax owner fails to pay his real estate taxes eventually they will take him to the tax sale <clears throat> now, one of the things you need to understand is technically it is a tax lien sale, not necessarily a tax sale. Unlike the sheriff's sale, when the property gets sold that day at auction, the property gets transferred. In a tax lien sale, there is a redemption period for the owner. So before the tax sale, <clears throat> the owner of the property has the right to come in and pay the amount of taxes that he owns and take him out of the tax sale. That is called the equitable right of redemption. Now it's called equitable because what does equitable mean? Equitable means fair or money. So if you owe $4,000, you have the right to walk in and pay the 4000 and get out of the tax sale. In Indiana, for 365 days past the tax sale, we have a law, and what is the word for law? Statutory right of redemption. Which means it, the seller, if he owes the $4,000, he has one year to pay the 4000 plus any penalties and get the property back, all right? That is not true in the sheriff sale. We do not practice the statutory right of redemption for foreclosure or the sheriff sale. Indiana does practice the statutory right of redemption for the tax lien sale, which for 365 days allows that homeowner to continue to occupy the property and live in it and do all of the things he wants to do. In essence, what's going on is the state is selling out their tax liens, real estate tax held by Indiana for $4,000. It would come in here, <clears throat> and we've talked about, you know, you got your first and second lien and third lien and all of that for that one year. Now, once that one year goes up and the person does not redeem their property, let's say they don't redeem, I can't spell. they don't exercise the right of redemption, then these all go away.
and ta-da. Now the person would get it over here for their real estate tax, whatever they paid, all right? So that's how the tax lien auction works. There is a redemption period for one year. Now I think if it goes through, if it doesn't get sold, it may go through a second one and a third one and they've got what they call A properties, B properties. I think this is 12 months, six months, and three month redemption time frame. Um, don't quote me on that. It's been a long time since I've been to a tax sale, but I do know that is correct. All right. 